you take anything out of this interview and you want to crush social, obsess with platforms and culture. Platforms are, what are the platforms currently doing that they give a shit about? So when Facebook announces carousels, good news, they need to test it. That means you should be making carousels because more people are gonna see it organically, right? If, if the trends of the consumers on the platforms are people like skits, that's a platform and culture thing because you gotta always know what's going on in culture. Culture is pop culture. Mm -hmm. Do you know that baggy pants are back? Like, cause tight jeans were fucking crushing seven years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know that Crocs came back five years ago? Because six years ago they were dork bill USA, but 20 years ago they were killing it. Do you know what's going on with Aiden Ross and Sexy Red's controversy or don't you? Do you know, like, do you know pop culture or don't you? Because if you do know pop culture, you're able to create crazy relevance. Mm. Right? Do you under, like, because you're able to integrate that into your copy or the creative itself. There's a few moments, there's three weeks to seven weeks there where the corn kid is a social media obsession. Or that, or that the Walgreens private label nice mango gummies are hot with Gen Alpha mm. for a week. But if you're in the fucking gummy business, you should know that. Or you sell candy, you should, like, do you have a pulse of popular culture on everything because what's pop culture to maybe us is definitely not pop culture to somebody that lives in Peru. Mm. Like, you know, like there's people that literally, I had a friend literally, cause I'm 48 now. So most of my friends are fucking finished. And what I mean by that is like deep pop culture. I literally had a friend six months ago text me, yo, have you heard of this guy, Bad Bunny? I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? Where have you I'm been? like, dude, please don't text anybody that. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I literally took a screenshot of me DMing Bad Bunny in 2017 for him. I'm like, yes, I've heard, like, you know, razzing him of like, he's finished and he's a fucking suburban dad. Like, do you know or don't you know? Yeah. So culture matters heavy for content because we're gonna have to be better than everybody else. And if you can interstitial pop culture, you will win. Mm -hmm. Like, do you know it's a lavender latte at Starbucks for this season? You can factor, oh, I like that you, see like, but notice what just happened? She like shook her head because that one hit for her. Whereas Sexy Red and Aiden, like, you know, like, so imagine if I want both of them to give a shit about me, I've got to do both those things because I've got one second in feed for them to give a fuck. It's Platforms okay. and culture. To me, that's very point in time, right? They're always changing. You've got to know what features are hot on the platform. Day You've got to know the, the algorithm, Day right? Trading. You've got to know what's hot. Day trading. Then you have strategic organic content. Yes. And to me, that's more about understanding human behavior. Strategic organic content is the content that follows the pack framework in my mind. If you know those two things, then you make according to that, that is the outcome. Yeah. That is the content. I'll give you an example. It sounds like I haven't dug under the hood, but I will after this interview that you're doing real work in LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So that means most likely that you want on the P part, the platform. I know that because I also heard you talk about what the platform's doing. If you do more about, this is how you get way better, this is how I get way better every day. In the pack framework, you can get to a place pretty quickly, six months, where you really know how the platform works. You've clearly done that on LinkedIn. What is really cool for you to go to the stratosphere is if you actually knew what was in pop culture talk for literally SaaS salesmen. Hmm for literally a, ca like, I know you're, this is gonna resonate with you. Like if you knew the fucking slang and the shit that every Fortune 500 CFO cared about, or every late stage VC CIO, now you're fucking cooking. Mm. Got it? Yep. Because now it's not just you know that this kind of content will work, mm -hmm. now you know even what the video or picture needs to do. Mm. Got it? Yes. That's packed. And so what, and then what we call SOC, strategic organic content, is the framework. It's, the reason I created SOC and we run it heavy here at Vayner is organic content, meaning posting without media behind it mm -hmm. or amplifying it, is now the single most important thing in marketing in the world. It's the game. Okay. If I needed to put the S in front of it, because by making it strategic, I'm trying to make sure that everybody in my company and all my clients and anybody around me realizes I need you to think about this. That's what we've been talking about for the last 10 minutes. There's a lot of people listening right now mm -hmm. that, I, that I can feel them right now as they're walking the dog on the treadmill. I can feel them saying, ooh, 
there's a lot to this. It isn't just like, no wonder my videos are not yeah. doing good. <laughs> you know, there's there's something to this. That's how I think about this. Yeah. So I, I want to dig in on strategic organic content. So one of the things I want to write my first book on is human behavior online. Because I feel like if you understand human behavior, even if algorithms are changing, certain things don't change. You always want to see a face. You always want to have a hook. It, everybody wants things shorter and skimmable, right? So there's always things. I, that last one, the first two I liked a lot. The last one's an interesting one for me. I guess it depends on the platform and what the purpose is, right? And you'd be shocked. I mean, I promise you, we'll clip this in the future. There's there's going to be seven-minute videos on TikTok that crush in three years. Crush. The thing that, this goes back to a big thesis in the book. If it's good, mm -hmm. you can do anything. If, it's a, if it is a wildly compelling 19-minute video, you can crush on Instagram, though it is very unlikely to be good enough to be able to do that, mm -hmm. right? So I, I just, I want, the reason I jumped in is you're not wrong. Yeah. I just wanted to add a curveball to everybody listening. It's it's not universal. Just because you make, people make unlimited seven second videos that people stop watching after a half a second because it's a shitty seven second video. And there's also incredible amounts of outliers if you pay very close attention of longer form video in social. Mm a minute, two minute, three minute, four minute that have a lot of validity. And honestly, for a lot of people listening, they might have just heard something that got them excited because in their gut, they're like, you know what? I really can make epic four minute videos. I guess TikTok's not for me, yeah. but it is. There's a reason these platforms, back to P, mm -hmm. have extended the length of their video time. There's yeah. a reason. So how what should we do when we have really good performing content? We should amplify it. If you can afford to spend media dollars after a piece of content went crazy, then you should do that. Hmm. And if you're just a creator by yourself and you're like a kid, if you're listening right now and you're 16 and like you dunked on your little sister in the basketball rim in your room and it has 3 million followers on TikTok and you have ambition to be known and you wanna do something with it, don't let the algorithm be the only way you get reach. Google, how do I run ads on TikTok? ChatGPT, how do I run ads on TikTok? Read and learn, you know, like how everything works, mm -hmm. or watch a video, and then you as a 16 year old, take your 40 bucks and spend it on getting more people to see it. Yeah, okay, so because we- Because the world has shown you that it's good. Hmm. You're not guessing. You didn't, you didn't dunk on your sister and then spend 40 up front. This is how all advertising works, as you know. We guess. Now we can live in a world where we can do it post-spend media, not pre-spend media. It's huge. So once we see something working, lean into it, invest in it. Don't just invest in things that you haven't tested yet, basically. Think about it, it's like working out. Like if you see something's working and your physique is like, why would you stop and try to do something <laughs> else and hope it works? Like you got it, go. We have not figured it out because the way media had worked forever was you spent the money on something you were guessing on. Mm. You thought the commercial would do well. You thought the billboard would go well. You thought your newspaper ad was good. Storytelling is omni. I don't even, as you know, I barely, it's not something I really touched on a whole yeah. lot. Yeah. Because it's oxygen. Life is storytelling. Everything's a story. I don't want to get super philosophical here, but everything, every person in the world, all 8 billion of us, everything we believe in is a story. Hmm. All of it. Amazing. It's the whole game. The reason I don't really go into like storytelling all that much is like my book on storytelling would, would be literally one page. It's everything. Like, the end. Like, <laughs> meaning like like the reason you believe in anything you believe in is because you bought the story. Yeah.